Uh, last last uh, time we were together, which was Sunday night, we talked about, um, you know, signs that this could be the one. And we, we talked about, uh, number one, uh, <clears throat> there, there will be present in the relationship mutual respect. I am great, Jason. Thank you for asking. There will be mutual respect. If you don't have respect in the relationship, if a woman doesn't respect you or if a man does not respect you, uh, you know that's a relationship that is going nowhere fast. Uh, secondly, we said that um, the person will make you feel like number one, like priority. Uh, you, won't, you won't feel like you're just a tag along, 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 Lisa? Tag along, along. Yeah, tag along, yeah. You won't feel like you're just tagging along, but you will uh, feel like priority. You will feel, they will make you feel like you are number one, numero uno. If they can't, if they don't make you feel like number one, if you feel like you're third or fourth on their list, that relationship does not really, um, it's not going, it's not going anywhere. Not recognize your value or the person is too, um, or the person is not feeling you like that. Either they're too immature to recognize your value or they're just not feeling you like that. Uh, thirdly, uh, they will have the ability to make you laugh. Why would you want to live with someone that you, you never laugh with? Why would you want to try to attempt to live a lifetime with someone that, that's never made you laugh? You've been with this person, you've been seeing this person for six months and you've never laughed. Why would you want to live with a person that can't make you laugh. Laughter is essential for a healthy relationship. Uh, number four, we said um, that they will be generous in every way. They will be generous in every way. A man will be generous with his money and his time, and a woman will be generous in terms of uh, being there to, to, to help the brother, to uh, stand in his corner. You know, I used the analogy uh, Sunday. If, uh, if a man is stranded, and he calls for the woman to come and help him, uh, pick him up from wherever he might be stranded. And she's talking about she's too tired. Well, that's a good indication that you probably need to keep it moving because the right one will be generous in every way. Uh, the right one will be generous in every way. Um, number five, they will allow you to be yourself. You know, they're not going to be sitting here and trying to... Uh, Figure out, uh, figure out what's going on with you in terms of how they can change you, how they can change everything that's fundamental about you. Uh, they're going to, they're going to allow you to be yourself. Uh, you will not have to you know, <laughs> go under plastic surgery because they don't like your nose. You know, <laughs> you're not going to have to do it. They will allow you to be yourself. And then we said that they will be patient with you. They will be patient with you. And uh, then number seven, uh, they will close the deal. You know, it won't be a relationship where you have to just drag on and on, you know, like you have these 10 year uh, courting sessions or whatever y'all might call it. Or five years courting, five year engagement. Man, come on, you you know, you getting mail from AARP now and, and y'all still haven't gotten married. What's, what's the deal with that? The right one will close the deal. They will have a mind, they will know what they want, and uh, they, will, they will close the deal. Um, now let's stick up with, I think, one, two, three, four, five more points, and then I'm out for tonight. You know that you have the right one when you've been with them for a bit of time, um, you know, three, four, five, six months, year maybe, and you've, you've had a lot of conversation and they've never lied to you, not even about small things. They've never lied to you, not even about small things. When you start catching a person in a bunch of small lies, a bunch of small lies, small lies speak of a major character flaw. If a person has to lie to you about where they went after work, and they're not even married to you. 
The right one will be a person that is trustworthy. They will never lie to you. You will never catch them in lies, just blatant lies, just unnecessary lies, just lying like a Persian rogue, just lying, just a lie, just every day it's another lie. And there's so many lies that you can't, you don't even let them know that you, 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 you caught them in a lie because you're catching them in a lie almost every time y'all talking. Man, you finding a person lying to you like that about stupid stuff, unnecessary stuff? Mm -mm. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. You don't, you don't, you. Now, the Bible says in Proverbs 11 and 3, the integrity of the upright shall guide them, but the willful contrariness and crookedness of the treacherous shall destroy them. You, when you start finding a person having character issues, when they, when they have character issues, lying, a lack of integrity, a lack of honesty, there is no foundation for a healthy relationship with a person that has major character issues like that. You don't want you don't want a liar. Now, I'm telling you, you do not want a liar. You don't want, don't want a liar. All right, number nine. That was number eight. They never lie to you. Number nine. You have shared vision. A lot of times, you 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 feel chemistry with the person, and all of that. You're attracted to them. They may even be a nice person, but if y'all don't have if y'all don't have shared vision, where can it really go? Where can it really go? If you, if 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 you all don't have shared vision, that's why the uh, you know the spiritual thing is so important. That you know if 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 you say you believe in Jesus Christ, how you going how you gonna get on the same boat with somebody that's talking about you know Buddha? You got to have shared vision. How how can we go in the same direction if we can't see the same destination? You have to have a shared vision. So when you get through looking at how fine this person is and your eyes uh, fl uh, fluttering and all that kind of thing, ask yourself the serious, the very serious question. Does this person, do we really have shared vision? The Bible says in Amos 3 and 3, can two walk together except they be agreed? Where can we go if we're not on the same page? Where can we go if we're not on the same page? Why waste your time in a relationship where it's clear that you have one vision and this person has none or another? It's, you know, you think about it. If you are a, if you're an eagle, why would you connect yourself with a duck? Nothing wrong with being a duck, but a duck needs a duck. Eagles need eagles because ducks can't fly where eagles can fly. Therefore, ducks are not even looking to go where eagles are looking to go to. And when you connect yourself with somebody that you don't share vision with, you are handcuffing your own. This thing is blinking. I hope it's not acting crazy. All right. Uh, number 10. They support your personal goals. They support your personal goals because no relationship that, e that leads to marriage is supposed to ever divorce you from yourself. If a person is not supportive of your personal goals, you automatically know that the best we can have here is a friendship because God is not calling you to marry somebody to bury all of the potential and power that he's put in your life. Especially if you're a woman, you don't want to marry a man that is not supportive of your goals. Women are generally supportive of men's goals when they're realistic. You know, if you're 50 years old, too much, you're going to be the next LL Cool J. Well, you know, that's another story. But usually brothers are not really supportive, that supportive of their wives. Just kind of want you to stay home, have babies, you know, cook that food and keep that house nice. But a lot of times, you, you know, you, you're a boss on the inside. And, and you, you want that thing to come out. You need a man that's going to what? Support your personal goals. The same way, you know, my wife has supported me for 20 some years. 
you know, now I'm in a posture where I'm trying to figure out well, what are your what are your aspirations? What do you want to do? I want to get behind her. I want her to maximize her potential. She was never supposed to. She was never supposed to. I think my, my Facebook cut off on me. I think it did. She was never supposed to lose herself. Maybe it's still there. She was never supposed to lose herself to marry me. And if you have a person that is not supportive of your personal goals, you need to keep it moving. Keep it moving. Sometimes you have a person that's satisfied right here when you know you want to go there. Well, you know, you can't. I don't care how much you, you feel attracted or talking about chemistry and all of that. There's no foundation. If you're trying to go here, you tell them you're going to settle for that just to be with somebody? You're going you're gonna to settle for half of what God put you in with somebody? I don't think so. Philippians 2 and 4 says, Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. If this person doesn't have the basic maturity to be able to look past his or her own personal stuff to see yours and to support yours, you know there's no foundation for a real relationship. Uh, this would be number 11. You know that you have, this could be the right one, this could be a, a you know real connection when you guys handle disagreements without drama. When you handle disagreements without drama. You know, if, if, if you have the, the slightest little disagreement and it's three or four, five days of no talking and people looking crazy, mm -mm. you got to be able to have a disagreement respectfully, maturely, without vulgarity, without a whole lot of slamming of doors and without, you know, punching in the walls and all of this kind of stuff and huffing and puffing, you need to be able to have a disagreement without the drama and be able to say, okay, well, this is where we're at. I was wrong here. I apologize. Okay, I was wrong here. I apologize. And then you keep it moving. If you got a situation where every time y'all have the slightest little disagreement, this person is going, you know, doing the most, you need to keep it moving because the Bible says in Proverbs 20 and 3, my, my connection looks bad, so I'm trying to move it. Proverbs 20 and 3, it says, It is an honor for a man to cease from strife, but every fool will be meddling. When you have a person that keeps up strife and is constantly arguing and wants to keep the argument going, you automatically know you have a fool. And you should keep it moving. And then finally, this has been a fast one tonight. Did I cut off over there, Lee? Praise the Lord, because it's looking crazy over here. Finally, now this is big right here. This is a big one right here. Uh, my, face, my Facebook people are pretty good. Pretty good. Um, number 12. You know that you, you may very well have the right one. When your closest relatives and friends see the same thing you see. A lot of times you're bringing people home talking about you in love and, you know, this is the, you know, this, this woman here is the sweetest thing since ice cream and all that kind of stuff. And your mama looking like, mm -mm. and then sometimes you say, oh, you know, mama's just overprotective and she just, you know, she don't want to lose her baby boy. And then your brother walk in, he like, mm-mm. And then your daddy walk in, mm-mm. The neighbor looking from across the street saying, mm-mm. <laughs> Even the dog say, whoo! <laughs> and then you want to just go out there and just do whatever you want to do all willy-nilly. Your friends don't agree with it. Your family don't agree with it. And I'm talking about people that have loved you, people that have taking care of you, people that have been there for you. If you bring somebody around those people and they looking like, mm -mm, you, need to, you may need to really take your time with that and really search this thing out. You need, especially if you have kids, if you're a woman or even a father, you have kids and your kids don't like a person, that's supposed to be an automatic, you're out of here. You, you, you bring a man home and your children looking like, 
mm-mm, I, I, I ain't having this. You know, but you want to run on out there and do your own thing. I'm in love. I'm grown. I'm grown. But you ain't grown when these people are breaking your heart, tearing up all your furniture, threatening to kill you. Now you want everybody's involvement in your drama. But you didn't want to take anybody's wisdom when you were trying to make the decision. If you don't want me involved in your in your decision, don't involve me in your drama. Handle your drama. When they still take all your money and you, you're about to get put out your house and now you're coming over here, you want my money. <laughs> but you didn't want to take my advice. But you want to take my money. That, like I've been living, you know, 51, almost 52 years just for nothing. I, don't, I haven't learned nothing in half a century. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm preaching better than y'all shout. All right, here we go. Number 12, your closest relatives and friends will see the same thing you see. Your closest relatives, I have, a, I have a, a spiritual daughter right now uh, who has grown children. She's getting ready to get, but she has a, a significant other. She's going to get married. And you know, I've not, I, 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 I've been trying to meet with them for almost two months. And she said, Pastor, I ain't doing nothing until we have that meeting. I want you to. And the other day I called, I, I saw them in a certain place and I said, I prayed about some things. And I kind of know this individual a little bit. And I said, you know, we're good, but we're still going to have our meeting. But how many folk are not wise enough to accept counsel? And then you make all of these, you know, crazy relational choices. And let me shut it down right here. Proverbs 11 and 14 says, where no counsel is. The people fall, but in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. So, you know, I just decided to finish this. Signs that you've possibly met the right one. Hope y'all got something out of this. Let's go.